Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to the Sweetwater Minute. I'm joined in the studio today by Fred Schuchert, the namesake of Fred and Stein Audio. Appreciate you being here. Yeah, thank you for having me here. Great to see you. You came all the way from Taipei. Yes, I do. 30 hours? Yes, a long flight. <laughs> and that's some jet lag to deal with as well, isn't it? Yes, of course. <laughs> so you are making very cool professional audio devices. We have one of your 500 series racks here, and we'll talk about some of the gear that's in here, including a brand new piece that you're introducing. And you're also making rack gear, tube gear, solid state gear. You're kind of covering the whole gamut, aren't you? Yeah, we are trying to, yeah. Right. How did you get into this world? Oh, I started uh, uh, having a small recording studio when I was uh, uh, after high school, when I was like 18 years old. Mm -hmm. We were on an 8-track tape machine. And then uh, later on, I uh, uh, did some audio development for also for tape machines and then went into general communications mm -hmm. and worked there my uh, last 30 years in, in uh, digital communications. And then five years ago, we decided to start Fredenstein and uh, come up with some individual gear that's not based on uh, traditional designs, right. uh, new ideas, new technology com combined with the best known methods of the old days. Right. So it's basically most of our stuff is uh, what you call digital controlled analog gear. Mm -hmm. We don't have really complete digital uh, uh, equipment. Right. Because that most more and more goes into the computers and software. And uh, we want to stay outside the computer, outside this realm. So we have uh, digital controlled analog gear. Right, right. It, it, there's two aspects to that, actually, and, and uh, they're both very interesting. First of all, as we can see here on your 500 series rack, mm -hmm. you can access some of the parameters using digital control here. We've got a touch screen on the uh, the new 610. Yeah. Um, but the, the one that I wanted to talk to you about first is you're actually using uh, digital technology to control tubes or to, to set the uh, the operating status of tubes. Tell us a little bit about that and how that helps. You know, if you if you ever be lucky and own a Fairchild 670, mm -hmm. you're permanently need to calibrate uh, the zero point and the balance of the tube. So even you have to wait about a half hour after you turn it on before you do it. And uh, we have a version of the uh, Fairchild 670, uh, it's called the F660, which has uh, computer controlled uh, operating points of the tube. So it basically does in the background permanently what you would do on the parts and the balance switches on the on the 660. And it's much easier for people to, to operate. Right. Right. Basically, it's happening in the background. It's, it's happening in the background. So you, you always have a perfectly calibrated uh, system. You don't need to worry about increased distortion or something because the balance of the differential stage is not very good. Right. So that was the first piece that that we introduced to the market. And uh, if you have a look here on our uh, mic pre, if I change the gain here, then you can see here all the parameters of the, of the so mic. You see, you can see here the gain yep. changes. And you can set the gain in 1 dB steps, not in the usual 3 or, or, or 6 dB steps. And uh, when you're pushing, this button here, you go back to the main screen, you see the power consumption of the whole rack, which would be here on the plus 16 volt, a little bit over an amp, and on the minus 16 volts, a little bit less than an amp. And you can see the voltages and the internal temperature, so you can be sure that uh, all your modules are working at their best. Right, right. So this is one of your, your bento racks. That's a bento. 10DS, mm -hmm. which has the display, and there's a six six uh, space version yes. of this as well. And yes. then you have uh, two six and ten space versions that don't have the digital yeah. uh, interface. He, uh, here you can also set the routing here um, on the display. You can say you want to have the audio coming in on the XLR, or you want to have the audio coming in from the slot to the left. Okay. So you can daisy chain the module, make your own little signal chain. Right. So, and uh, the regular model without a display, they have switches in the back panel here. They can do the same thing, but you have to manually go there and, and switch that. Okay, okay. So. One of the other things I noticed about your racks when I was checking those out is that uh, you offer quite a bit more power than most other 500 series racks as far as what feeds into each module. Yes, like uh, this this rack here does 3.3 uh, amp on each rail, mm -hmm. so in uh, that means 
you can have 660 milliamp per slot. Mm -hmm. that, that's quite a bit higher than the standard is calling for. The standard is 250 milliamp. Right, right. And what's the advantage of that you know, in a rack like this? Uh, you can do, you know, more modules and the mm -hmm. higher. Um, if you have things like with touch screens and uh, the power consumption tends to get a little bit higher than it used to be in the old days. You had sure. this like microphone breeze. There was just a little bit of analog circuitry, no computers in the module. So with all the computer stuff, I think the power consumption of the modules is slowly going up. Mm -hmm. And you want to have a rack for uh, extended period of time that has some reserves for upcoming modules that uh, take more power. Sure, sure. Speaking of upcoming modules, you've got uh, the uh, 610 here, which is being introduced at Winter NAM, which is yeah. taking place next week. It has a touch screen out. I don't think I've ever seen another 500 series module with a touch yeah, screen. Yeah, it, it, it's a, it's a four-band EQ mm -hmm. and has some, some special features here. It has, uh, in addition to the four bands, it has a a low cut filter, mm -hmm. and all four bands go from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Okay. So you don't have designated mid or high mid bands, and uh, the amplitude that the resolution is plus minus uh, uh, a quarter dB in the gain setting. Hmm. So for uh, mastering, you have a very precise gain setting, a quarter of a dB, and you have about 190 different frequencies per filter that you can hmm. go there instead of the usual 10 or 15, right? right, right. So you have a lot of things and uh, you also have a built-in real-time analyzer that show you your uh, um, spectrum at, at, at the time because we don't have an input signal here as it's right, right now. Right. Uh, and this will store 99 presets, is that correct? It stores 99 presets, and also the filters can, can be operated here by the touch screen. You can see, you can change the filter frequency and gain mm -hmm. just by touching the unit. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. And what is the USB port for? Uh, USB, you can uh, control the whole unit by, by USB. All the settings that you can do by touch or by the encoders here, you can set that through the, through the USB. So we are talking to uh, some manufacturers to implement that into their uh, uh, recording software. Sure, right, right. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. I, ca I can't wait to check that out. That's uh, mm -hmm. well, it's a lot of fun, <laughs> if nothing else, right? Having, having, the, having the touch screen on it. It looks super cool and well, and, and of course all your I stuff I think it's the great, first so. 500 series module that ever had a, I think so. a touch screen built in. I right? haven't seen another, I haven't yeah. seen another. So we actually have two different, uh, two different uh, lines, if you will, yeah. here. Tell us the difference between these two and the rest of the modules. Um, this is our value line, the artistic line here. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't mean it, uh, it, it has some limited uh, uh, capabilities or limited quality in it. It uses uh, steel output transformers which give you that vintage sound that a lot of people like. Right. And uh, we have three different modules. We have a mic pre, we have a, a, a FET compressor, and we have an opto compressor in, in, in this series. Okay. And then you end it, call it the gold series here. We have uh, different mic pre's, tube mic pre's, mm -hmm. or discrete uh, transistor mic pre's, like this one here. Right. Um, with the specialty here, you can switch on the uh, input and output transformer. And there's also a computer inside that will automatically compensate for any gain difference. So you can <laughs> do that and just really hear the difference of the transformer. You don't have to deal with the gain changes and, and things like that. Right, right. It's distracting from, from, from this experience, right? Sure. sure. And this is a tube, uh, a tube uh, mic pre and there's a real high voltage in there. It's not a staff tube design, so mm -hmm. it's two tubes. And uh, uh, with an uh, um, American-based input transformer, and it gives you also uh, a very uh, satisfying vintage sound, especially for guitars and voice and things like that. Sure. Mm -hmm. So, and here we have uh, just a little additional unit you can 
plug in two unbalanced signals and convert it into balanced signals because all of our modules are uh, for balanced signals. Right, and you, you also have the capability with your racks and with the modules to, as you mentioned, run two channels through a single module. Yes. So you can actually run left and right through yeah, a single module in this case. Yeah, if you would turn around, you can see we have four XLRs per channel mm -hmm. in, in these racks, right? But usually you have only two, but we have four XLRs. So we have the main in and the main out, and also auxiliary in and auxiliary out. Like uh, for the compressor here, we use the auxiliary input as an external side chain. Sure. So you can switch it here on a switch here from internal to external side chain, mm -hmm. and then you can trigger your snare with your bass or whatever you, you want it to, yeah. right? So sure. you have some more uh, additional capabilities that you wouldn't have with a standard rack. Right, right. And there are five or six more modules in the, the series as well. Yes, and this is only a small uh, part of what we, what we do. Right, right. We and also have a tube compressor mm -hmm. Uh, in a, in a uh, 500 series. So There's a control room monitor module yes. and, and a, a variety of different things that you're yes. doing. They're all, yeah. all very cool. Yeah. Yeah. And then you do standalone rack units yes. as well. You mentioned the F660. Yes, we have uh, the F660, which is kind of a Fairchildish machine on steroids. Mm -hmm. And we have the F676, which is a tube uh, mic pre. And we have the F200, that's a dual mic pre and FET compressor in a one new unit mm -hmm. for a live or recording applications. Right, uh, right. One of the things you, uh, you point out very often is that you're pretty adamantly opposed to negative feedback in your designs. Yeah. Why is that and what does negative feedback mean as far as the end user goes? Yeah, basically, you, you, you can build an, an amplifier that's not really very good. Mm -hmm. And by adding, like say, 20, uh, 20 dB negative feedback, you can make the amplifier look uh, 20 dB or one tenth better than it, than it really is. Okay. So, um, and we believe that uh, not having negative feedback give you and have an inherently good amplifier, you know, that doesn't really need the feedback to have good distortion and, and frequency response uh, values, that will give you a more open and a more undistorted, more natural sound experience. Right, mm -hmm. right. Did I see where uh, one of your microphone preamps specs out to 900 kilohertz yes. bandwidth? Yes. What is the, what is the point there of, of going that far? Uh, you know, you would think there's no point to it, right? <laughs> and I, I would agree if I would have read the spec. But you take some two very, very good uh, condenser microphones mm -hmm. on a Steinway piano and use that amp and you would not ask the question anymore. Uh -huh, right. You really hear the different openness, the different uh, uh, transient response. It's more interesting for transient response and openness. Okay. It's not really that I'm saying, you know, we need 900 kilohertz, you know. Sure, sure. But, but it's, it's, it's a, a very, very audible difference compared to normal amplifiers. Right, right, that's crazy. Yeah. That's, and as sample rates have gone up and DSD and things, you know, there's, there's support for some of that as well. So. Yeah, I mean, now you have 384, which gives you a theoretical user per bandwidth of a 192, right? Mm -hmm. So... Uh, yeah, it's, and and it's definitely it sounds different. You can you can hear it. Right, right. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Probably not on your bass drum, but if you go for <laughs> for 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 acoustic instruments of any kind, you will you will see the difference. Right. or hear the difference. Better. Right, right. Well, you got so much great stuff yeah. going on, Fred. Yeah. Yeah. We appreciate you making the long flight from Taipei. I know you're headed out to Nam uh, next week, yes, and uh, yeah. congratulations on the success of the company. All the incredible gear you're making. Uh -huh. It'll be a pleasure to have you here. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Appreciate Bye. it. And thank you for joining me for the Sweetwater Minute. I'm Mitch Gallagher.